Hi Flosstube, it's Bree here with Bree's Stitch and Stuff. Today I'm going to do a little bit different video. We're going to do a stitch with me because today starts and a forest grew. I bought this pattern a while ago and um, two martini stitcher, Erin, had mentioned that she was going to do a stitch along with it. So I put it off and I'm going to start it today because today's Arbor Day, the beginning of And a Forest Crew Sale. So it um, it started with Erin, like I said, and Je I think Jen, Jenny, um, at the Bluegrass Stitch or something. Hang on. Yeah, Stitching in the Bluegrass. They um, decided to do this together as a sale. So there is a Facebook group now you can go ahead and join. It's And a Forest Grew Sale 2020. Um, I can't remember if you have to ask some questions or not. I think you just join and then they say yes or no and let you know if you made the group or not. And there are two hashtags. There's hashtag And a Forest Grew Sale, hashtag All the Freaking Trees, F-R-E-A-K-I-N. So check them out. If you have this pattern, it is from 2006. It's an older pattern. Um, so if you have it, pull it out. Go ahead and get started. If you've already started it and haven't done anything with it, start it now. Um, I am doing the, all the called for floss. I had to use an entire box to hold all the floss. There's 102 colors. So this week, what this was my my project this week was abominating, labeling, and putting all my floss in my box so I had it ready to go and I'm doing it on a 32 count cream Lugana I use a K's creation stand for stitching um, I think I'm gonna do one strand over two threads I'm gonna try it and see how it looks see how I like the coverage um, I did that I did the one strand over two threads on my Al Forest Embroidery, my cat, and I really liked the coverage. Um, so I'm going to try it again, see how I like it. If I don't, then I'll just switch to two strands. Um, this is not my normal stitchy spot. I normally stitch in the living room, but with everyone home, I thought I would try stitching in my room. I don't know, the lighting is a little weird because I have light coming this way, so I have a shadow on my fabric, but I think it will be okay. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I am going to start up in this left, the top left corner here and then work my way. Um, I'll probably go page by page. That's usually how I've been doing it. Um, and then I'm on a hunt for a different saying for here. Um, I just don't care for the, the verse that's in here. So if any of you guys have any tree poems, tree songs, little little blurbs about trees that is super awesome leave them down in the um, comment section so that I can look at them and see if maybe I mean I'm not gonna be here for a while <laughs> so I got a while to plan something um, and see if I, maybe I can turn it out for something different because I don't like this um, saying so we're gonna start up here and see how far I get I'm only gonna film for maybe 20 minutes something like that just just a little quick a little quick video um, so I looked up what Arbor Day was exactly and um, Wikipedia says it's a holiday that encourages groups of people to plant trees so yeah there you go um, that's the perfect perfect pattern for that then I am also gonna do um, Christine over at Stitch All the Things. She has a question, questionnaire type thing um, that you can do while you're doing these stitch, like the Christine tag. So just questions about me. I'm going to read the questions and then I will um, answer them as we go while I'm stitching. They're nothing very, they're nothing crazy, nothing too juicy though. I read through them real quick to see what they were. I watched her video a while ago with it, and I thought maybe I'll do that now. So the first question she asked was, have you ever called into a radio station? And if you have, why? No, I have not. Um, but 
radios were like huge back when I was like in middle school, high school. That was when we had cassettes and you would tape your songs and make playlists. <laughs> um, I'm in Chicago, so we had some pretty awesome radio stations when I was in middle school and high school that you used to listen to all the time if people would call in and request songs or win tickets to concerts or any of that fun stuff, but I never did. Nope. Um, let's see, what's the next one? What was a odd task or chore you did as a kid? I don't have any odd tasks or chores as a kid. I was a pretty self-reliant kid, pretty quiet, pretty too much to myself. Uh, my mom was a single mom for a few years when me and my sister were little. So, I mean, we did the normal, help mom clean, do dishes, all that fun stuff. Um, and then when I got older, my mom got remarried and had more kids. So there was five kids then. Um, but the boys were a lot younger than me and my sister. So we kind of got stuck doing the babysitting and the cleaning and all that fun stuff um, during that time. But nothing odd or weird. Um, the next question was, do you remember any recurring dreams from your childhood? I do, actually. So we had lived in this big old house, me and my mom and my sister when I was little. I was probably, I think it was like kindergarten through fourth grade we lived in this house. And it was one of those houses that had the walk-in attic and there was like that creepy window and there was a creepy chair up there like all by itself when we moved in. So me and my sister never went up there again. I for sure think the house was haunted. I had a few different um, experiences in that house where I was like, oh yeah, for sure. There's ghosts here, but they were nice ghosts. They were really helpful. Um, I don't know if you believe in that stuff, but I do. Um, but yeah, it had some it had some good vibes. But my bedroom that I ended up getting in this house, it was like a three bedroom house. The bedroom I got had this really creepy like Victorian doll wallpaper. I'm not even exaggerating. All four walls had this wallpaper and it had like Victorian dolls on it. It was the creepiest thing ever. Um, so I would have these dreams where I had, it was like, like I said, it was me and my sister. So we were pretty close when we were little because it was just the two of us. And, um, we had, I used to have this dream only in this house. Once we moved out of this house, when I was in like fourth grade, I didn't have the dream anymore. And, um, there was this big black and white cat chasing me and my sister. Nothing ever happened, but we were scared to death. And this black and white cat would chase us like huge. It wasn't even like a normal size cat. It was like. A cartoon monster sized cat. But yeah, that's the only recurring dream I could think of. But yeah, as soon as we moved out of that house, I never had that dream again. So that was a weird, weird dream. Next question Can you curl your tongue? I can. I can also wiggle my ears. I don't know if I can show you guys that. Let's see. See? I can wiggle my ears. My kids are jealous because they can't. They think me wiggling my ears is pretty awesome. Which I'll have to admit is pretty cool. Not many people can do it. Um, next question. What is something you have struggled with throughout your entire life? <sighs> There's a lot on that one. Um, I would say my biggest struggle, though, has been um, my inability to express how I really feel. Um, I'm not good at... I've gotten better now that I've gotten older, but... You know, it took until I was in my 30s before I was comfortable enough to tell people how I really felt or um, where I didn't feel bad for saying how I felt. Does that make sense? Do you get that? Um, I never wanted to, you know, make people upset, um, disappoint someone, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that's something that I struggled a lot with. And still to this day, when I get frustrated, I cry. Um, and I get mad, I cry. And it's not like, I just, I don't know, I think it's because I don't know how to express it correctly. So I just, my body's reaction is to cry. Um, but yeah, that's probably the, one of my big things that I've always struggled with and constantly I'm working out on how to get better about it. But I'm getting better. I remember when I was younger, I used to, um, like if I get upset with like my mom or my sister or something, and I, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable telling them, so I'd write them a letter. <laughs> 
So I'm sure my mom has <clears throat> lots of letters from me when I was younger telling her, you know, when I was upset and why and how I feel bad or, you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> but yeah, now, now I kind of, um, say a little too much sometimes, but you know, we're all humans. We're all trying to figure it out. The next question is, can you parallel park? And can you drive a stick shift? I cannot parallel park to save my life. Luckily, um, where we live, um, we live in suburbia. <laughs> so we have lots of SUVs and minivans. And I have a little, little four-door car. So a lot of the parallel parking spots are big enough for SUVs and minivans to fit. Um, so you can actually just like, if you have a small enough car, you can just wiggle in and get into a parallel spot. <laughs> That's my parallel parking. I can't parallel park. When I was in driver's ed, it wasn't something you were required to learn. So I never learned. And I'm too scared to do it now. Um, I can drive stick shift, actually. Um, my husband, when we first got married, he had a stick shift truck. And I had to learn to drive it. And I love, love, learn, love driving stick shift, actually. It's really fun. Um, I'm not <laughs> I'm not really good at the hills. I mean, we're in Illinois, so we don't have a ton of hills, but there's a few hills. So when he had his truck that was stick shift and I would have to drive it, I would take longer routes to get somewhere so I wouldn't have to stop at a stoplight on a big hill because I was worried I would roll back too far and like hit the car behind me or something. <laughs> so, but I can. I can get to where I need to go. Um, there's not very many cars that are in stick shift anymore. So you don't have to really worry about it. You don't really have to learn it anymore. Um, let's see. What's another question? Uh, the next question is, how well do you react when the internet is slow or your computer is acting up? Um, I would say it depends on what I am doing on said computer and or internet. If I'm just wasting my time. I don't, I just close my computer or my phone and be done with it. If I'm trying to do something, um, I don't get, so when I get angry, I just swear. So I probably just swear at my computer <laughs> and then just take a breath and move on. I don't know. I don't really get too upset about that kind of stuff. Uh, next question. Have you ever sent a meal back at a restaurant? No, I have not. Um, we have a lot of servers in our family and I know how hard they work and it's not their fault if something's wrong. And my biggest fear has always been if I sent something back, they would do something bad with my food. So if for some reason I don't like, like say I ordered something and I don't like it or whatever, I'll just eat it and just not order that again. <laughs> but no, I'll tell them, like, if it's something I don't like, I'll just let them know, like, hey, you know, it's not something, you know, like, blah, 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 or whatever, I'll tell them, but I won't request um, a new meal because I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm just not like that. Um, next question. It. It's 30 minutes before mealtime and you have nothing planned, what do you do? We either, I will either go get takeout or we'll go to a restaurant or it's leftover night or cereal night. That is what I do. Um, I am, we are pretty, well, I'm pretty good about um, laying out meal plans for the week. But there are some nights where I just don't feel like cooking. <laughs> so those nights we'll just, you know, order out at a restaurant that we really care for. Or you just scrounge through the cabinets in the fridge and see what there is. And that's, that's your meal for the night. Um, I don't have any go-to quick meals or anything like that. We don't, we don't do much pasta in our house. And... Um, so yeah, I don't have that kind of thing. And I don't bulk buy food, if that makes sense. I buy what we need for the week and that's it. So, yeah, that's probably what I would do. 
Next question. Is there a word you have always pronounced incorrectly in your life but didn't know until you were an adult? I am very bad at words. I think my brain can't keep up with how fast my I want to talk. I don't know. I pronounce things all very incorrectly, but I do remember um, it's not necessarily a word. It's more of a saying. Um, and I just found out like as an adult that, oh, that's not what you say. So when people sneeze, I always said, um, bless, bless you, bless you. I don't know why, but it's bless you. But I always said bless you. Um, yeah, but that's the only thing I can think of. I don't say a lot of words correct. I can't pronounce words at all. Um, I had to do Spanish for one year. Like, that was part of, like, our curriculum in our school. Um, I couldn't do it. I literally couldn't do it. The, do the teacher would get so mad at me because I couldn't figure out how to pronounce stuff. But I just... I can't articulate stuff. So I'm sure there's tons of words that I say. In I know there's tons of words I say incorrectly. Um, and I have nice enough people in my life that don't ever make fun of me for it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm sure there's uh, quite a few words. Um, and then the last question she has on her list is, what is your social media pet peeve? So, I know some people get real worked up over social media, and they let it bother them, and I don't, I don't really care. Um, I guess my biggest pet peeve is when people share way, way too much information about their personal life on, on the social media, but it's not like I'll never, like I'm going to defriend them because they shared too much information with me. Sometimes I kind of feel bad. Um, because they obviously don't have someone in their life that they feel comfortable enough to talk to about whatever's going on. So they have to post online and hope that somebody will reach out to them. Or maybe they're just trying to start a fight. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't really have any pet peeves on social media. Um... Those were all her questions. I need a drink of water. Um, yeah, it's just... My husband kind of gets like that sometimes, too. He'll get real upset about, you know, oh, I just need to be off the social media. and I don't understand why he gets so upset about it. It's like, why do you care what people say? <laughs> I don't... Um, I guess, though, like... Most of, like, so, like, it, my social media for me is Facebook and Instagram. Um, most of my Facebook and Instagram, my friends on there are either quilters, bag makers, or cross-stitchers. So, really, all I see on my feed is pictures of pretty projects. <laughs> so, maybe that's why it doesn't bother me so bad, because I rarely will see, like, something on in social media that will like uh, like offend me or upset me or whatever because I'm just looking at pretty pictures so maybe that's why I don't ever get to that point I don't know but yeah I don't ever I don't know social media is weird I'm glad I didn't grow up like in my teen preteen years with social media I don't know we have um my 14 year old is in eighth grade no he's 13 he's going to be 14. um he's in eighth grade this year so we're doing this you know the distance learning right now from home so he got we were going over his um gym class um the other day and the gym teacher had set up like a bingo board so you have to you know you do whatever activities are on there and then if you get a bingo whatever like your goal is to get a bingo but, like, a few of them were, like, social media stuff. Like, oh, make up a dance and post it on social media. Make up something and post it on TikTok. Well, we don't let my eighth grader have social media. Like, he doesn't have a Facebook page. He doesn't have an Instagram. Um, 
you know, he doesn't have any of that stuff. So I was just like, okay. Like, I just thought it was so weird. Like, that was, like, part of the assignment, like, to post on social media. I don't know. So as I'm stitching here, you guys, I have a quick question. So as you can see, I stitched two-handed on my stand. Um, my backs, they're me like they're messy and that's fine. I don't care. But sometimes when I'm stitching, they get really bulky. Is there a tip or a trick that you guys can um, give me on like moving through your project or through your stitches to like lessen the amount of bulk on the back? Um, I pretty much stitch the same each way. You know, I go from the bottom on the bottom left to the top right. And then I go from the bottom right to the top left and then move on. Sometimes I'll switch that a wet round depending on which, where my next cross is going to be. Um, but I notice some of my, pro not all, but some of my project get, gets pretty bulky on the back. Um, how do you get, I mean, I'm not looking for having like a beautiful clean back like some people do where it's like a reversible picture. I'm not really worried about that. Um, I just, sometimes the back, it's so bulky. Is there... Is there any tricks you guys have for that? I don't know. Um, I'm, you know, self-taught, just kind of watching other people stitch, figuring out what to do. Um, and I haven't done any sit-ins, you know, for stitching any at any cross-stitch shops or anything like that. And I don't have any real-life cross-stitchy friends to be like, hey, look at my piece. Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? Um... So, but yeah, if you guys have any tricks or if you know of somebody that has a video out there um, explaining how to reduce the bulk in the back of your stitching, let me know. Um, I mean, definitely my stitches are, my backs are getting a lot more organized looking the more I'm stitching, for sure. Uh, I'm getting better about, you know, not carrying my threads. Um kind of keeping everything in the same place but yeah sometimes it's bulky I don't know how are you guys all doing everybody's doing okay um we have uh a lot of uncertain times happening right now there's a lot of a lot of um stress tension anxiety all that kind of stuff Check in with everybody, with everybody you know and love, care about. Make sure everybody's mental state is doing okay. Um, I think that is kind of a thing that's being kind of looked over at this time, you know, because everyone's so worried about the virus, which they should be, but um, people's mental health is huge. This is something most of us have never experienced before. So I think... Um, we need to make sure we're keeping up with each other and making sure everybody's doing okay mentally, you know? Look at my cute little scissors I bought myself, like, a long time ago. It's a little fairy. <laughs> I love them. They're my favorite. Um, hang on. I just want to show you guys my bag here one second. Let me just finish off this thread. And then maybe you guys can help me. This one's actually... Not too bad, because I'm using one thread or one floss. I'm going to take this off my, my stand real quick. Okay. So actually, I'm going to stick with the one floss over two. I like that a lot. Um, I kind of like the... I don't know. I always say it's like a distress look, like this kind of stitching. I'm sure there's an actual technical term where it's not super full and um, puffy stitches. I really like that. Okay, so that's all I got done. I'm going to piece out here in a second, but I just want to show you my back real quick. Oops, sorry. So this is what my back looks like. That's pretty much what my backs always look like, but sometimes like I'll get a lot of bulk. Like this is actually pretty even all the way around. There's not any spots that are like real bulky or anything like that. But is there anything else I can do to make it look nicer? Or to make it less bulky? I don't know. 
I'm sure somebody out there has some advice for me because you guys have all been stitching, well, not all of you, but a lot of you guys have been stitching a lot longer than me, and um, I'm sure you know more. I know you know more. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys for joining me today. Like I said, go check out In a Forest Grew. Rosewood Manors is the design company for this. Um, actually, the designer is Karen Kluba, but the company that printed it is Rosewood Manor. But it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. There's even some smalls throughout the book. Um, I mean, it's a big, it's a big book, but it's beautiful and I love it and it's going to be huge. It's, I think it's like, let me see what the measurements are. If you do the front one, it's 420 stitches by 200 stitches. So it's a big in. I, this is just a project I'm going to work on until it's done. I have no plans on when it's going to be done. I'm going to work on it as much as I can. Um, just because it's really pretty. I love trees and there's some pretty little animals and birds and whatnot throughout. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me today with my little stitch with me and doing my Christine tag. Um, it was fun. Uh, if you guys, like I said, if you guys have any questions or any tips and tricks about my stitching or about anything that you guys can give me some pointers, that would be appreciated. Um, because we're not going to stitchins right now to be able to talk to people one-on-one -on -one. so I need you guys to help me out so that my stitching continues to get better and better so I hope you guys all can get some good stitching time in oh and Jen Lee is doing 24 hours of cross stitch starting today until Sunday so if you go over to her Facebook page 24 hours of cross stitch um I think that's what the Facebook page is she is quirks and stitches Jen Lee on YouTube her last video talks about this this weekend's um 24 hour cross stitch so um if you are able to and you don't have anything else major going on this weekend it's 24 hour cross stitch so you just cross stitch to your heart's content and nobody can complain because Jen Lee says we can do it you know like it's like a national holiday basically so check her out and um everybody keeps stitching and i hope everybody has a wonderful weekend stay happy stay healthy and stay calm